Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Lovely to come and celebrate the harvest to mellow fruitfulness. It's not that mellow yet. <laughs> Hopefully, you should have an order of service and you have a hymn book. Everything else you need is um, not at the end of the service, except some money, but we'll talk about that later. So we're going to begin by standing and using together that prayer at the beginning of the sheet where it said, harvest and praise. So shall we stand? We'll use this prayer together. We are drawn together today, gathered from our places of work, our homes, offices, gardens, warehouses, or factories, to this festival of heart. We are invited to bring the work of our hands, the fruits of our legs, offering back our best to God in celebration of what he has provided. We come to worship our generous God with open ears and hearts, hearing his call for workers in the harvest field. Amen. And we sing our first hymn, number 101. Come, ye thankful people, come. Number 101. Be thankful, God, our Maker, does we Seated, and we're going to have first a poem and then a reading from the Bible. The harvest song is gathered in, 
which is in autumn this year, orchards have shared their treasures, the fields the yellow grain. So open wide the doorway, thanksgiving comes again. After you have pressed all your corn and pressed all your grapes, celebrate the festival of planting for seven days. Enjoy it with your children, your servants, and the Levites, foreigners, orphans, and the Israelites who live in your towns. Honor the Lord your God by celebrating this festival for seven days at the one place of worship. Be joyful because the Lord has blessed your harvest and your worship. All the men of your nation are to come to worship the Lord three times a year at the one place of worship, at Passover, by the second day, and the festival of shelters. Each man is to bring a gift, and he is able, in proportion to the blessing that the Lord your God has given you. We then read the reading. We're going to try a, a newer harvest hymn. Um, it's one we've been doing with the children in school for the last few years, so it's not that unfamiliar, but some of you may not be familiar, but we'll have got someone who's singing it along with us, so it does make it easier. The words are on the sheet, and it's called Autumn Days. So shall we stand and see how well we do? And if you can't join in singing, you can please listen to somebody else doing it. Sing what the sea is doing, the same thing, so I don't just not show. Get lazy in the end, maybe we won't sing, so I love so much, so I mustn't forget. So I mustn't forget. Can you say what will be done? I must forget. Well, it's a good thing for me, the old faces and the wind, and smell the wind, and the wind, and the wind, and the wind, Picked up spray that is great for scattered at the swamp of building in the sky. True so comfy though the warm ones and the hats of that you taste far back for fun. So I mustn't go again. So I mustn't go again. Can you say no great thing that you give a must go again? Set the cars when the rains be falling and the middle of the dark in the most way. Picked up and you have been sorry in the soul and the wind for my home tea, so I mustn't forget. Can you say when you thank you, I mustn't forget. I have to tell you that when I did it with the school a couple of years ago, one of the little children came up to me afterwards and asked why the shoes tasted like apple pie. And when you look at the last verse of that um, third verse, last line, it does, could be read in the wrong way. So we're going to turn over the page and we're going to use the harvest collect as we begin by praying. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory. Help us to enjoy the rhythm of life, the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea. We thank you for harvest. 
May we cherish and respect this planet and all its peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That first reading from Deuteronomy contained a reference to going up to the temple for a harvest festival. And Psalm 100 was one of the psalms they would use at that time. So we're going to join in together with Psalm 100. You look like an intelligent group of people. So it, on this side, we say the bits in light print. And this side, side says the bits in dark print. And we'll see how we do. So this side starts off. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. The Lord is God. Enter his courts with praise. And thanksgiving, sorry. And give thanks to him. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. We're going to sing again one of the newer harvest hymns. It's in your book. It's number 557. Who put the colours in the rainbow? 557. Put the colors in the rain, who put the salt into the sea, who put the cold into the snow, who made you and me. Who may well than stale than quail? Who may watch than the dog? Who may watch than the who may see that leaves and trees? Who may sow and wind that fall? Who may sleep and wake the fall? Who may fall? Yeah, put that bit down. And we're going to have our next Bible reading. Do not fear, O toil, be glad and rejoice. The Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and the vine give their full yield. The children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you an abundant rain, the early and the later rain, as before, the threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, 
and my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other, and my people shall never again be put to shame. So we sing our next hymn, which may be more familiar, number 534. We plough the fields and scatter, number 534. We love the fields and scatter the fields on the land, but it is then not watered by God's almighty hand. The pleasing and the sun shine and so reflecting when all the gates of love are sent from heaven. Oh, thank the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord, oh, 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 Please be seated for our next reading. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as, you have, as much as you have up in your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good thing. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for all will supply them and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of his ministry 
not only supplies the needs of all his saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Our next hymn is the favourite hymn of Cricket Lovers. If you notice, and we wrote it, um, if you know the name, then you'll know who he is. But we're going to stand and sing number 179. God, whose farm is all creation. Number 179. Who is creation? Please be seated for our next reading. No one can be a slave in his two masters. He will hate one and love the other. He will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is why I tell you not to be worried about the food and drink you need in order to stay alive, or about clothes for your body. After all, isn't life worth more than food, and isn't the body worth more than clothes? Look at the birds. They do not sow seeds, gather a harvest, and put it into barns. Yet your Father in heaven takes care of them. Aren't you worth more, much more than birds? Can any of you live a bit longer by worrying about it? And why worry about clothes? Look how the wildflowers grow. They do not work or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that not even King Solomon, with all his wealth, had clothes as beautiful as one of these flowers. It is God who clothes the wild grass, grass that is here today and gone tomorrow, burnt off in the oven. Won't he be all the more sure to clothe you, how little faith you have? So do not start worrying, where will my food come from, or my drink, or my clothes? These are the things the pagans are always concerned about. Your, faith, your Father in heaven knows that you need all these things. Instead, be concerned about everything else with the kingdom of God and with what he requires of you, and he will provide you with all of these other things. Our next hymn is number 186, which reminds us of God's faithfulness in all the circumstances of life. Number 186. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. 
And the peace that I used to think that harvest was one of those very early church services that's been happening for, for centuries. Um, but I discovered that actually that the modern harvest service as we know it only started in the 1850s. It was started by a clergyman in Cornwall who noted that all the labourers who were bringing in the harvest were having far too much fun towards the end of the harvest, but they were drunk and caroling and generally um, enjoying themselves in all sorts of ways. And he said, we can't have these people having all this fun. It's not good for them. So we'll have a church service and take all the fun out of it. Now, that's not quite what he said, but that's the gist of what he did. He took a celebration of God's harvest and turned it into being something which was quite doer. But also that what we tend to think of as harvest actually has its roots in something which is much older and strangely enough, not at the end of the harvest. So what we think of as harvest service actually was fairly new, but the root origins in the days of Jews and, and things like that, the Old Testament days, was that they would celebrate what we would now call Lammas, where they would celebrate the first fruits of God's gift on the harvest. So at the beginning of harvest, they would take the best of the first grain and they would bring it as an offering. They will take the best of the first fruits of the vine and bring them as an offering. They will take the best of the fruits of the trees and they would bring them and they would also bring the best of the young animals and bring them as an offering to God because they wanted to give the best that they had received, not just as an afterthought, oh well we've got a bit of change, we better give it in the collection. So the idea behind the origin of if you like, harvest, is celebrating God's goodness, God's provision, by being generous back. Because at the heart of harvest thanksgiving is this idea of generosity, 
of giving something of what God has given to us and sharing it with those around us. It's a generous thing, not, uh, oh dear, we'd better come to the end of the thing, we better have a harvest service. It's a celebration of God's provision, and therefore we want to care for others also. And that's something of those words in Corinthians. It says that be generous with what God has given you and share it with those around you in need, because God will always provide for the things that you need. It's in fact, it's like an act of faith. It says God has provided for us, so we will give out of God's provision, and then he'll provide more that we need. The temptation um, is to hold on to what we've got, isn't it? Say, well, I've got this amount, and if I use it carefully, I might have enough for next week, and I might have enough, but, but I've got to be careful with what I've got because I don't want to waste it too much. That certainly is happening. If you grew up during the times of rationing and things like that, that was certainly how we were taught, wasn't it? You budget for how much you've got and you make it last as long as you can. I grew up with three brothers um, and my mum and dad, remember the days when you used to get sausages, wall sausages in packs of eight? Anybody remember packs of sausages? I had three brothers and my mum and dad. And so my mum and dad, and I don't never quite work this out, bought two packs of sausages which means how many sausages are there? Two packs of eight is 16. 16 sausages, four boys, mum and dad. That's six. Six into 16 doesn't quite go properly, does it? <laughs> so my mum and dad would say, well, we can have three each because we're the adults and you boys can have two each. And then the other two sausages were put on the table in the middle of, the middle on another plate. And then we could start eating. And there was this mad rush as quickly as you can, to finish your stuff, you said that you could grab one of the ones that was on the table in the middle. Now, of course, you never did anything like that when you were young, did you? Now, there's two thoughts which occurred to me recently about that. First of all, it would have been so much easier if they'd just cut those two extra sausages in half, wouldn't it, than make us fight for it. But also, I vaguely remember, you used to be able to get packets of 12 chipolatas, which were exactly the same as, those, as the big sausages, but there were 12 in a pack. And that would have been even easier, because 6 into 24 goes very nicely. But that was how we did it. There was this vague sense that if we didn't rush, in fact, we wouldn't, we would miss out. And we didn't want to miss out because that meant my brother's got something over me. Now, there is sometimes that sense in our story which says we've got to look out for ourselves. We've got to compete with those around us. We've got to get for me. Because I need that. I want that. We could actually, as a boy, just say, well, we'll have half each, but we never quite got that far. And I don't know why. Um, to his brothers, probably. <laughs> but, there is, but the intention of God is that we share out of his goodness. Those words from Matthew's Gospel talk about the fact that God provides for us all that we need when we need it. So don't worry about what you're going to need and when you need it, because God will look after you. And don't worry about storing it up, because there'll always be sufficient when you need it for the things that you need. I, I, I was trying to find out where this came from, and I'm not quite sure. I think it was Randall Hurst. Who was one of the great millionaires, billionaires in America in the in the 1920s, 30s, 40s. And when he died, and I think it was Hearst, but maybe one of the other ones, but it's certainly the press went up to his lawyer and said, How much money did he leave? And the lawyer said rather quickly, I thought, all of it. All of it. You can't take it with you. The temptation is it to hold on to it because I might need it at some point. But actually, that we can't take it with us. We're always going to leave it behind. Because God's home is not in the same way that it is now. So therefore, we're looking for something which is different and better. So why do we put so much store on stuff? We're not on stuff. doesn't actually bring us happiness. It usually brings us misery. <laughs> I want more. When as soon as I start wanting something and I can't have it, that, that's a way for things which aren't good for. Stress and strain. So the invitation to us is to hold on to things lightly and to be generous. And not just things, but in the attitude of our heart. Because generosity is not, it's not the first thing we do. It tends to be the last thing of what we give. John Wesley once said, the last thing to ever be converted is the wallet. And I think there's a degree of truth in that. But there's a generosity of heart that we're called to have. A generosity which is about how we deal with each other. The things we say our expectations, the words that we use, a generosity of, of the time that we have. How do we use those things? Do we use them generously? 
Or do we look to pull people down and run them down and, and get one over on them? I wonder if you, I, I'm not, I don't suppose you ever do this, but sometimes I go in amongst groups and you find that people talk about their friends and neighbours. And they don't always say the best qualities that they have. They're, they're usually saying what they're doing, which is not quite how they would like it to be. There is something which is about a generosity of spirit, which says we look for the good in people, we look to bless them, we look to be the best for them, and look for the best in them. And we do that because God has been good to us. He's poured out his best for us. Not just in the general sense of creation, but also in his son, Jesus. And so we find this lovely thing at work that God says, I will give to you all that you need when you need it. So trust in me. I am faithful. But then the wounds of history, the wounds of our story, our experiences of not having enough, our experiences of being told that we've got to care for things, all those things that get put upon us can affect our hearts. And we end up not being, finding it easy to be as generous as perhaps we'd like to be. And one of the things God promises to do is to heal up our hearts, to teach us how to be generous with words, with deeds, with actions, with our gifts and our resources, to share them. Not to necessarily give it all away, but to share it with those around us, with a generosity of heart, to let God prove that he is indeed God and he can care for us. And so the invitation to us as harvest is to say, yes, Lord, teach me how to be generous. Generous in all that I do, but all that I think, and all that's in my heart, because you have been generous to me. And it's in response to that generosity that we can give. So let's be still for a moment. I wonder what are the good things that you want to say thank you, God, for. Maybe family. Maybe friends. Maybe for resources houses and homes, financial security, a land producing harvest. And as we give thanks to God for those, asking him to heal our hearts, that by his spirit we might be generous in giving to him and to each other. Bring our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So our next hymn is number 138. For the fruits of his creation. Thanks be to God. And during this, we will be taking the collection. The so number 138. For the fruits of his creation. 138. For the fruits of his creation, thanks be to God. For the fruits of every creation, thanks be to God. Thank 
Coming to the end of our time, just a couple of very brief notices. Um, first of all, that we've just launched a project across the whole of the benefits, which is inviting people to take a square of linen calico, which we've got spares of for people to take if they want them, and we're going to make a banner for the benefits. And the way it's going to work is that people are going to take square and embroider or needlework or cross stitch or paint or draw or something <laughs> to create it. And always say, you don't need advice or you somewhere in it, your initials will appear so that we know who you are. Um, and we'll draw a sphere bit later on. And the idea is you take it and you do it over the winter. Um, and some people are going to do it in pairs or in families and things like that. Um, it's any way you like, anything you like. And then we're going to bring them together in the spring and we're going to make them up into sort of like um, a big banner which anybody can join in with. So if you want to take one, there's some at the back. There's also an instruction sheet which gives you details. Or if you've got your own material, if you like doing cross stitch, you've got a bit of cross stitch material or embroidery or something like that, collage is all right, and whatever you like, then you can use that as well. But bring it back when we'll give you instructions how, and then we'll put it together, make up a big banner of everybody's, like a sort of like a, a quilt, if you like, of everybody's designs, um, and we can celebrate our creativity. So that's there, and there at the back. If you want one, please do take one. Um, if you're more than one because you've got creative people in your family, more you can do one each, that's fine as well. And then also to say that on the 26th of October, it's only a couple of weeks away, um, somebody's coming to visit. Who's coming to visit, Brian? On the 26th of October? Sue Woodcock. Sue Woodcock. Who knows who Sue Woodcock is? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know who Sue Woodcock is, ask Brian. That's not fair. She is a columnist. Uh, humorist, she talks, she's apparently very funny and she's very creative and she's going to be here on the 26th at 7 o'clock and it's £7.50 a ticket and if you haven't got your ticket yet then why not? So, that's not. Then I'm available. I do you want some? Mine's got some and I think Brian might have some as well. So please do buy your tickets if you've not already done so. That's the 26th at 7 o'clock and that's here. So we're now going to finish, we're going to pray and ask God's blessing. And then we're going to see when they went up to the temple for the harvest, they went up with one hymn, Psalm 100, Psalm 100. But then we're told in Isaiah that as they went out, they went out singing for joy, and the trees in the fields would even clap their hands at the excitement of what God has done. So we're going to sing that song and teach you how it goes. But before we do that, let's ask for God's blessing as we go from here. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the harvest. We thank you for your generosity to us. We thank you for your goodness and favour. And we ask that you would teach us to be generous in all that we say and all that we do, so that people may see your glory at work within us, and so that we might see your kingdom come more here on earth, as it is in heaven. And so we pray together for the coming of the kingdom in the words that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace and blessing and goodness of God be poured out upon you, so that you may know his favour and his grace, and that your lives may be made full of joy. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all of whom you love, this night and always. Amen. We're going to serve tea and refreshments afterwards. If you would like to stay, please do so. It would be really good. But we're going to finish by singing number 571. It starts off slowly and then it gets a bit faster. So mm -hmm. it's not too difficult. Shall we stand? Mm -hmm. Now go out with joy and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy, and the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees and the fields shall clap their hands. The trees and the fields shall clap their hands. And you will go out with joy. Shall go out with joy and be led forth with you. And the mountains and the hills shall be grateful. Before you shall be shouts of joy. And the trees of the fields shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you shall go out with joy. Shall go out with joy. Be led forth with thee. And the mountains and the hills shall be born. Before you there'll be shouts of joy. And the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you go out with joy. Shall go out with joy, be led forth with thee. And the mountains and the hills shall break up before you, there'll be shouts of joy. And the trees of the field shall clap, shall clap their hands. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. The trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you'll go out with joy. Oh, yeah.